Pew, pew. Hi. Welcome to another episode of The J Situation. Uh, this episode is a bit overdue. Uh, life happens, but I'm back and I want to get some good content going for you here. So today I have a special treat. This is a long-term use report for the Pulsar Helium XP50 Thermal Monocular. Um, I'm going to use the word Helium. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Uh, I picked that because it's also uh, one of the products of the decay of tritium. Uh, it's, a, it's a plus one, so doubly charged helium ion. Uh, and uh, so for short, they call that a helium. And so since we use tritium in weapon sites and all that good stuff, that's what I'm picking. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. So again, this is a long-term use report. So I've been using this unit, this is my personal unit, for a few months now, several months, and I'm a little bit late getting this review to you due to some business travel, uh, but I've taken this unit out in the field heavily, I've used it a lot, so kind of wanted to show you what it's all about. So this is the standard case that the helium monoculars uh, come in. It's similar to uh, the cases of other Pulse, Pulsar products. It's that ballistic nylon, uh, pretty good quality. Um, one uh, differentiating fact between this case and some of the other ones is that it's not quite large enough to hold all your accessories, but it is large enough to hold uh, the main unit in some of them. So the case is pretty nice, it has a strap on it latch closer the closure and you can take the strap off of the case which is pretty good you know depending on on your needs for transport so this is the main unit uh, you can see this may look a little different than uh, some of the other ones you've seen I've added a couple things um, first thing I've added here is the extended battery module from Pulsar. Uh, I use both the extended battery uh, and the standard battery it comes with. We'll get into that later. But a lot of times I just leave that uh, extended battery connected because it lasts such a long time I really never have to worry about it. Um, one thing I did add that uh, it didn't come with was a strap and this strap is not <laughs> a pulsar strap it says loophole because this is actually the strap for my uh, loophole bx4 uh, binoculars it's a really good strap I ended up using a different case for my loophole binoculars that has it, its own strap so i got to cannibalize this and you know why waste a good piece of equipment right so one thing that's kind of cool about the helium if you can see here you have these existing loops that are molded into the fiberglass polymer reinforced housing and if you're really really patient you can shove the lanyard attachments from this loop hold strap through there while maintaining the included pulsar hand strap it's a tight fit but it can be done you just needs some finesse and I really like doing that um, I like being able to hold it of course like this but I also like it have to have it around my neck because this is a you know principally a spotty monocular, so it's handheld use. You can use it on a tripod too, which we'll get into. But but really, this is going to be either around your neck or by your side the entire time you're out in the field. So let me go ahead and disconnect this neck strap so I can move the unit easier and get this out of the way. Well, crowd the view. So what you see here is the main helium unit. I'm going to go ahead and take the battery out. Again, this is standard Pulsar technology battery throw lever, throw lever. Come up here, once it's disengaged, you simply pull it out. And for those of you who haven't seen this before, you can look at my other videos, but you can see the cam levers actuated just like that. And so those engage the cam lugs on the battery itself and again those are just mechanical lugs they are not uh, conductors so all the 
all the electrical contacts are here um, within the the recessed uh, waterproof connector. So I'll put that away. So here you have the naked unit. So what you see is kind of what you get. You get the main unit. You get the standard pulsar battery with battery cover. You get the wall charger, which mimics the device connection, complete with cam locking lever. Uh, it has an LED light that you know will blink on in various ways to indicate the level of charge. Like the unit, comes with a micro USB connector. Then you have the wall charger, which is a 5 volt, 2 amp output. Something to be said about these batteries, they last a long time. Uh, you're really going to be hard pressed to run these all the way down, even while leaving the unit on. Uh, there's some functions you can enable to save power, but like I said, uh, what, I, what I like to do Typically, if I'm going out for a night, I'm talking a full night, maybe even some of the day or dusk um, when I'm setting bait and things like that, I'll take uh, the big battery and they're fully charged and I'll just keep this, this small one as a reserve knowing that uh, I'm, probably, I'm probably not even going to run the small one down if I started to use it with that, but just as like a safety factor, just because you know, you're out in the field, you don't want to mess with stuff, I, I put the big battery in there because I know 100% I'm not going to run out. So let's get into some of the details of the main unit. This is the XP50 Helion, so this is the top of the line thermal monocular from Pulsar right now. Uh, so its complementary uh, brethren, I guess, would be the Accolade XP50. Uh, I did a review of that. You can, you can see that on the YouTube channel. Uh, those are the binoculars. So this is a monocular. And, you know, there are pluses and minuses of using a binocular versus a monocular. I like monoculars because you only lose night vision in one eye. Um, that being said, binoculars are good because they allow for less ocular fatigue otherwise. So you kind of have to make a judgment call. It really depends on the price point you want to reach and um, the functionality and the field that you would like. Now, for me, um, when I'm using a rifle a lot, I want to keep my right eye nice and um, my pupil nice and dilated and because I'm right eye dominant and for um, viewing and spotting when I'm not shooting which is most of the time I use this with my left eye my non-dominant eye so um, getting into some of the features um, of the sight or the monocular this is the XP50 so you have a 50 millimeter focal length lens with a 42 millimeter diameter so that's the objective lens. It's germanium glass, so you want to try to protect that um, as well as you can. The uh, lens for the Helion series is actually detachable, which is um, it, by the user, which is different from the trail thermal weapon sights from Pulsar that you're mounting on your rifles. So what you do is you take this lever here, I'm not going to do it right now, but you take this lever here, you pull it back and what you're going to do is you're going to take this housing um, and you're going to twist it and then remove it. And a really good reason why you would like to do that, well there's a few. One, uh, you may want to change your focal length uh, and, and your lens diameter for different uh, field use, uh, different target distances, different observation distances, and Pulsar does allow you to purchase the lenses from the other Helion devices. Uh, so you, this is the biggest one, but you can purchase the ones that are smaller. And in the menu options, after you switch the lens, you can select which one that you installed and the software will um, allow for its use. The other good reason why uh, you want a lens that can detach on a handheld device that you're going to drop is because you're going to drop it. And I've dropped this thing a lot. I'm really careful with my stuff, but you know, stuff happens. And, and believe me, if you use this in a field and you hunt with it, 
uh, you do any kind of other operations with it, you're, you're definitely going to drop it. And I dropped it really hard one time. And let's see if I can get this in the camera so you can see. So you see how dirty the lens is. So I haven't quite cleaned it after this last use. But you see this little dent right there? That's a steel ring uh, within the, the lens housing. Well, this took a... A pr pretty much, I would, would say a drop, but it's it's not exactly a drop, it's, it was more of a throw onto a concrete slab, and this plastic deformed, didn't break, just deformed, got scuffed up a little bit, and it did bend that metal housing. It didn't affect the functionality of the lens. Um, Pulsar was actually willing to send me out a, a new lens um, immediately uh, just to just to replace it, you know, so I would be able to go on using it. Pulsar has great customer service. Uh, didn't really need the new lens. Uh, it's it's really great and still works. Uh, kind of one of those pucker moments. <laughs> you definitely don't don't want to drop your you know your your spotting monocular that cups uh, cost a couple grand, a few grand. So you know that was a that wasn't a good time, but thankfully it's it's okay. Um, regarding cleaning the lens, what you want to do is you want to use. Uh, an isopropyl alcohol of very high purity. Uh, I have some of that right here. Get it? This is the stuff I use. Um, I think I might have gotten this from Amazon. So uh, this is a 99.9% a .9 purity and the, re the reason why I like to go with the high purity uh, is because so you're using you're using the alcohol as a solvent to dissolve uh, bits of, of dirt and grime. Uh, prior to use of that, uh, I like to use canned air to get all the you know major pieces of debris off of there. So, as you can imagine, you're using this as a solvent, you're putting it on directly on the germanium glass. I use a Q-tip very lightly to do so. Uh, it's going to evaporate, that's what you want. It's an alcohol, so it's going to evaporate very quickly. The higher the purity, uh, the, the faster it's going to evaporate and more cleanly it's going to evaporate. You're going to have a little bit of residue, and but with some finesse you can deal with that. Just uh, note that you don't want to clean your lens more than you have to. So that's why you know you can see some specks on this lens. That's actually because I used it at Yellowstone National Park in the rain. So it was raining when I was using this, uh, and and so I I just haven't got around to cleaning it. Again, clean it sparingly, but when you do clean it, clean it correctly. Something else I want to say about the lens uh, while we're talking about it, uh, it is it does have a focus knob. So I'm going to see if I can get this in the camera. All right. So here's the unit body. And if you want to watch this gap right here, I'm going to turn the focus knob. You see that moving? So that's mechanical. All right. This is a mechanical zoom. So you're adjusting that zoom length of the lens. You see how slowly it moves when you turn that? You really have a great degree of adjustability when you're viewing objects with this. When you're focused all the way in, you can view objects as close as 10 feet. Um, I would say, I guess, three meters around there. Uh, it's it's definitely useful, and this that's with the 50 millimeter. So I, you know, I've been in thick brush uh, tracking a wounded hog before, or a downed hog rather, and uh, I did find it a little bit difficult in very thick brush, as you know, the brush is right in front of you. It still worked. Um, so for, you know, for very close tracking and, you know, if you're in very cramped conditions, you know, you might want to switch to a, a smaller diameter lens or even one of the, the cheaper helium devices that has the smaller lens. But I really like the XP50 because it gives you that flexibility to kind of reach out and, and view your targets very far away with the, with the full size lens. And then if you're so inclined, use it on closer targets or switch out the lens um, after the fact to, to do so. So this is the XP50. So it has the 17 micron pixel pitch, the same as the other uh, XP series monoculars and sides from Pulsar uh, and also the Accolade. 
It has the 50 hertz refresh rate, so you're not going to get any blurry images in the viewfinder. Remember that, again, I've said this uh, with every Pulsar device review, this is a very high-end digital camera. Okay, you're, you're not looking through uh, an optical sight like you do on your rifle um, you know, on, in your day scope. Uh, you're looking through a digital camera, so whatever you're seeing through this viewfinder, um, it's, it's going to incur processing time. Um, and it, it's it's not speed of light like you would get through a normal scope. So when you're shopping for uh, night vision and thermal thermal optics like this, uh, make sure to look at that refresh rate. So this one's 50 hertz. The sensor array um, behind the lens is 640 by 480 pixels, um, and each pixel again is 17 microns in size. It does have onboard video recording. Uh, that's something else that kind of differentiates uh, Pulsar products from some of the other guys out there. Um, you don't have to have an external DVR unit, which, you know, it, it's definitely definitely useful. Uh, it takes away a lot of clutter. It has 8 gigabytes of onboard storage, so uh, due to the compression algorithm that Pulsar is using, you're really not going to run out of space for a while, especially in, in one night. So uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. It has Wi-Fi, so you can do a couple things with the Wi-Fi. You can update the firmware. You can connect uh, with Stream Vision, which is the Pulsar app on your phone, uh, basically to use remote viewing, which is, which is a really cool feature. And you can control uh, a lot of the functions from your phone as well through that Wi-Fi connection. Basically, what the device does is it starts its own Wi-Fi network, and then you connect to that uh, with your phone or tablet or you know whatever device you would like to use. Uh, as far as durability goes, uh, I guess I already showed you that I I bent the lens housing um, and it kind of kept on ticking right along just fine. Um, it's the same uh, glass fiber reinforced polymer body that you have with the, the trail weapon sights and the Accolade binocular. Uh, you never get a feeling that this thing is... Uh, not durable or delicate, and like I said, you're gonna drop it. I mean, you let you, you know, you're probably listening to this, and you're like, oh no, Jay, I'm, I'm, I'm really careful with my stuff, and you know, I'm responsible, and you know, blah 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 blah. But but you're not, and you're gonna drop it. So just know that it's gonna be okay. And if for some reason you happen to break it, Pulsar is gonna take care of you. Some of the other Pulsar products also come with uh, remotes. Uh, and uh, this does not come with a remote, which is a little interesting to me, honestly, uh, because of all the products that use remotes, um, I think the Helion has the potential to get some really good use out of that. Uh, for one thing, you got this quarter inch diameter by 20 threads per inch, I think. I think that's the thread pitch on this, this female connector here. That's for normal tripod stuff. Uh, I put this on my Primos uh, Gen 3 trigger sticks when I'm out in the field. Sometimes I use it to record me shooting. Sometimes I have it kind of as an observation uh, camera um, to use it day or night and it's pretty cool and I can control it with my phone far away but having that little remote which you can get from Pulsar and it comes with the trail sights would be pretty slick. So I feel like the remote's a worthwhile accessory for the Helion. I wanted to show you um, the difference in holding the unit when you have uh, the normal battery that it comes with and the extended battery. So first uh, we'll go with the normal battery. So again you unlatch the cam, place the battery in there, boom you're locked in place. Again I, I every video I do with with these Pulsar products, I do that just because I, I think it's so freaking cool. It's one of the best uh, attachment and, and uh, removal systems for a battery in any field optic I've ever seen. I, I, I think it's really awesome. Can't say enough good things about that. It, it's easy in the dark, it's secure, it's waterproof, it's, it, it's really simple to use. There's no fumbling around with it. it just, it's just badass. So, what I want to show you so you see the unit is really compact. It's very, very compact. Um, I'm looking around on my desk here for 
some stuff to to uh, compare it with. Um, I don't have anything out. Okay, here's some deodorant. This is a deodorant thing. Yeah, so that's a pretty common item, right? It's smaller than that. All right. Yeah, yeah. Enough comments about this, but again, it's household objects. So you know that that's what I'm doing this for. But oh no, here. Okay, here's another thing. Rifle stock. All right. This is a Magpul. Um, what is this? St. Yeah, it's an Str. Okay. Um, I haven't used this in a bit, so it's just sitting around. So just to kind of give you an idea of overall footprint. Okay. So it's really not that big. It's, in fact, it's considerably smaller than the trail weapon sights are. Smaller and lighter, and by the way, it's not built for recoil and it has no way to mount uh, to a weapon. I mean, you could try, I guess with that, you could get creative, but I, I, I would urge you not to do that. So, when you have the normal battery installed, hand up like that, I have it kind of loosened because I use the bigger battery, but so you can operate just, this just like a camcorder, right? Just like one of those old uh, camcorders you would use, you know, before everyone used their cell phones. So you have your buttons very easily accessible here. Uh, one thing to note is that they're in a very similar configuration to the weapon sights. However, your power button is also on top, which is different. And it's different than the Accolade, and the Accolade to date has the best freaking button layout ever when you can, uh, you know, you had both hands here, uh, and check out the other review for that where you could kind of actuate the buttons in a, a cross configuration. This one is in a straight line. It's intuitive, but you really need to get used to it and you need to think about it um, for the first few times you use it, then it should be a breeze after that. So I really like the in included strap. It makes it pretty secure. Uh, you, you know, you're probably going to drop it eventually, but when you're out in the field and using it, um, it does give you a, a bit of assurance. So that's what it looks like with the normal battery, which is flush with the housing. You take that out and put the extended battery in. That, close the lever, and now you see why I kind of lengthened this connection which is adjustable it's velcroed so that gives me a tight purchase on the site I can still reach them the buttons uh, sometimes um, it, this is secure but sometimes I do use my other hand to make adjustments um, it's all about your finger lengths your hand pre your your preference for navigation through the site Honestly, uh, there are a couple buttons you're going to use more than others. It really depends on your use. So uh, we'll go through those next. So let's look at some of the buttons on the top of the unit, some of the different features it has. So beginning forward, first you have your power button. Of course, that's self-explanatory that it powers on and off the unit. But it also has other, other cool functions similar to other Pulsar sites. So... You hold it down to turn it on, you wait for the screen to boot up, and it does. While the unit's on, if you tap the button, you can nuke the site. So you do a non-uniformity calibration, and uh, you'll notice that you'll need to do that more often uh, when you first turn on the site, um, and have the, the site's internals acclimate to the conditions. You know, you have this heat sink on the side here, very similar to the trail weapon sites, and that's dissipating heat from the sensor passively. Okay. Another thing that this power button does besides turn it off, if you hold it down for a while, it's going to turn it off. If you hold it down for just a little bit, what it's going to do is it's going to go into a display off mode, which is really neat uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to conserve battery. For some reason, you um, need to do that, which you probably shouldn't with this. Uh, but the other thing is to dim the display. So what it does is you hold it down for a little bit, the display goes off, but it has a little icon that bounces around there on the display, which is uh, blue in color, blue and white. And it's, it's going to emit a little bit of light, but not nearly as much as 
the display would emit if you were um, having it, the, the entire display on. So that's a really cool feature I really like. So uh, moving aft on the site to the, the button with the up arrow, uh, that is a multifunction button. It's going to move you up in the menus. What it's also going to do, if you hold it down, it's going to toggle your Wi-Fi function, which is pretty handy, especially when you want to use your phone for a remote viewing device. It's also going to switch you between different color palettes you've selected. So in the menu system, which is reached by the M, the menu button here, with the Helion, you have you have something that's a lot different than the trail weapon sites and you have way more color palettes to choose from because it has a color display whereas the trail site is is grayscale or it's monochromatic so with the helion you have um, uh, the white hot the black hot the red hot there's sepia and some other ones rainbow and you know some weird ones that you might not use that much nonetheless some are more useful than others um, especially for wildlife photography um, different viewing conditions I found that when it's raining certain ones can be better so uh, you have those features if you want them the point is you're gonna be able to select between white hot and another one of those and you're gonna be taught you can toggle between them using this front button so in the menu you can you can choose between all of them but then when you're kind of in the the normal function of the device you tap this button and it's going to switch you between two of them so that's really handy um, I usually like to pick white hot and black hot but it really depends what I'm doing on the down button of course that's self-explanatory and that it moves you down in the menu system but it also actuates the zoom and the picture-in-picture -picture function. Similar to the trail weapon sites, uh, you can tap it and move through uh, graduated zoom levels. There are multiples of the native magnification. So in this case, your native mag is 2.5x. Uh, this is going to knock you to 5, 10, and 20, which is pretty sweet. So moving further aft, you have your record button. On this uh, Helion, uh, it you see that it's blank. Okay, so that, that button's blank, but that is the record button. So that is, that's all the buttons on the unit. Um, it's on the heat sink. On the other side, similar to the weapon sites, you have the rubber cover that conceals the micro USB slot for downloading data or in videos and pictures from the site and the waterproof cover sits back in place like that. On the rear all the way aft here you have the eyepiece. I really like the eyepiece uh, it has a kind of a light guard that is rotatable depending if you're using your right eye or left eye so that's pretty cool and then it also has a diopter adjustment here for your uh, eye focus depending on if you have a prescription uh, so that that will focus your eyes view of this of the screen that you're looking at within the site so that's that's a pretty standard feature but um, it's pretty robust definitely easy to grip definitely easy to change in the field definitely easy to change between users if you know you're, you're handing this to someone too so this review has been a little less technical than some of my other ones, but again, this is a long-term use review, and now I want to go into some of the things uh, that I've observed with this site as I've used it over the past few months in the field. Um, the first thing I really want to highlight is the durability. Uh, I know I've already touched on that a bit, but I, I really want to make sure people understand this thing is built very well and I, I wouldn't hesitate to, to buy any Pulsar product that is engineered in a similar fashion. Like if they were to release something that's updated uh, and it had the same type of housing, um, I'd be all over it. I mean, this thing's awesome. I love the form factor. I love the materials it's made out of. Um, I love the fact that it's waterproof. Um, I've used this in the rain, actually torrential rain. Uh, with absolutely no worry um, 
Rain is a funny thing with thermal. Uh, you would think that it would really mask um, its use, but it surprisingly, it works pretty damn well depending on what you're doing. Um, I used it at Yellowstone National Park. I was able to see bison and elk, uh, mule deer, and things like that in the rain. It worked pretty damn good. Uh, done it in fog. Um, it doesn't work as perfectly as it does on a clear day, but it works really, really well. Um, it's, I guess it's all about uh, the temperature gradients between your, your target and the surroundings. So I've been very, very pleased with the overall durability and the waterproof and dustproof rating. This thing looks kind of clean right now. That's because I blew it off with compressed air last time I brought it in. But I've gotten this thing caked with dirt, um, especially down in South Texas where I hunt. Um, so it's it's definitely it's definitely gonna gonna give you some longevity at least physically. Uh, one thing that is very important to concern yourself with when you're shopping for something like this is uh, actual clarity. So this is Pulsar's top of the line monocular, but it has a color display. Uh, some people really, really love all the different color palettes. But I tell you what, uh, if, if I had my choice, I would prefer to have a black and white or black and green or basically I, I want a mono, monochromatic uh, pixel type and on off on the display because when you introduce these other colors, I mean this thing has the same sensor array, has the same lens type kind of as the um, as the trail line weapon sites with, that have monochrome displays and I, when I was testing the Trail LRF weapon site, I found that for positive target identification at far distances, the monochrome display was superior. The Helion worked, the color display worked, but when having it on white hot or black hot, you're going to have just not quite as much detail as you're going to have on the white hot and black hot display of the monochrome. Um, and that all that's doing, it's talking about the screen inside the unit. It's not talking about the lens. It's not talking about the sensor. It's not talking about the pixel pitch. It, it's just uh, just the way that your eye is going to perceive uh, the, the display. So um, you should know that if you're looking through your Trail XP50 um, weapon sight on your rifle and you buy a Helion XP50, you're going to see a very comparable image, but it's not going to be identical. Um, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know that that's, that's the case. Um, I guess the only way to, to show that to you without you trying it in person would be to film, film the display with a cell phone or another camera because um, the, the downloaded videos will be identical. Because again, it's just the sensor, right? So that's a good thing to know. Um, another thing um, I wanted to talk about really quick is the size. Uh, I found this to be perfect. Um, I showed you guys the case earlier. The case is a good size. Um, there actually is a pocket in here to put like a lens cloth and stuff like that, but um, I actually haven't even used that lens cloth that it came with because I, I, I don't tend to really clean it in the field. I tend to clean it when I get home in a controlled environment. Um, but it's a good size. You can put this in a pack. Uh, when you close the lens cap, um, you can put it, you know, anyway, we're really not going to damage the lens. This little eye cup piece flips down, so that's kind of cool. Um, it helps it not get in the way when you're putting it in a, in a pocket or flap or pouch or, or the case it came with. So I like that. It's easy to hold. It's pretty light. Uh, this is the extended battery again, and I can still hold it really well. Uh, it's, it's just a really handy, uh, easy to use unit. As far as usefulness, um, I want to say that if you hunt at night or you, even during the day, man, I, I, I feel like I've used the Helion just as much during the day as I have at night. Uh, I just really like using it. I find that unless the grass is super tall, I'm locating any animal. Um, 
you know, if the grass is super tall and wet, you know, and, you know, thermal signatures are going to be masked, uh, you know, you might have some good luck with night vision here and there, but I, I'd say, I'd say thermal's still good. Um, it just, it doesn't matter what thermal you're using, you're, you're not going to be able to see them that well. But other than those conditions, um, I'm loving this thing. I, I'm, I'm saying that when you go out hunting, you do not want to be pointing your rifle at everything under the sun. It just, it's just not a smart thing to do. It's, it's not safe. Um, and even if it is safe, man, it's a pain in the ass. You know, you really don't want to be holding your rifle um, up, you know, to your eye all the time. So if you had something really light like this, and you basically have this running spotting duty the entire night hanging around your neck on the lanyard or whatever you want to do with it, or even mounted on a tripod, uh, it's definitely good to have a dedicated spotting device. And for spotting, uh, I, you can't do much better than these things. I mean, you can go with the binoculars from various co companies too, but again, for night vision, I like to keep one of my eyes fresh and, uh, you know, with my, my pupil nice and dilated. And, and if I can use one eye, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to use a monocular like this. So with all the features, um, I'd say as far as value goes, uh, you really, it's, it's really hard to beat these things. Um, I like the value actually of the XP unit, XP50 unit. It's the most expensive XP unit, but you do get the biggest lens. And if you really want a smaller lens for looking at stuff closer up, just buy the lens separately. So then you got, then you can interchange them. So I don't know, to me, if you're going to get in this game and you're going to be spending the cash anyway, I just go with the XP50. But that's, that's just my opinion. Thank you for watching this long-term use report on the Helion XP50 Thermal Monocular from Pulsar. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll try to respond to them in a timely fashion. Again, apologies for the, delay, the delayed review. Uh, I'll try to get caught up on some of your questions on the other videos. Um, have a good day and stay tuned for more. Pew, pew.